Can you make some noise? <laughs> oh, thank you, Blender Conference. I'm so excited to be here. Just <laughs> and have you guys drunk at least one cup of coffee today? By show of hands, at least one. Oh, that's good. I guess the rest of us have drunk two cups of coffee, yeah? <laughs> Whoa, that's a good start. I'm very excited about it. And now we have these sleek new hands-free microphones, and that kind of makes sense. Free software, free hands, yeah. And I, I love using my hands to think. It somehow helps. And if you watched at least one of my videos, you know that、uh, I'm doing it way too much, over the top. I just love gesturing. And some guy told me in YouTube comment section something like, "Gleb, can't you just tie your hands to your chest or whatever?" But that helps me to think. And I want to share with you the moment of my life that I enjoy very much. Every time I see this photo, it just puts a smile on my face. Look at this douchebag. <laughs> this is seven-year-old me, and I was playing some stupid computer game. And just by looking at my face, you can tell that I was spending quite a lot of time playing games. I have the dark circles under my eyes. I look bad. And to prevent me from dying, my parents used to hide the keyboard. And, or even worse, my mom just disconnected the power cable. It was cruel, and I always wanted to say something like, "Mom, stop! I'm not just playing some stupid games. I'm doing a serious business." But I understood that it wouldn't cheat anyone. Okay, so I didn't say this, and it took me some 20 years to actually reach that point where I can say that. I'm doing business, yeah. I still do stupid things. I record tutorials. I run the Creative Shrimp blog. But that's a kind of business for me. We hit 43,000 subscribers on YouTube channel, and by the moment of speaking, it's more like 45,000. So it's growing pretty fast. But I no longer live with parents. So anyway, for the next、uh, 15, I guess, minutes. We'll be talking about fun stuff, about computer graphics and lighting, and some third thing that will become clear to you in a moment. I want you to take a look at this render. This is one of the most realistic renders I've ever seen. Honestly, I would happily sell my mother into slavery to be able to create something <laughs> like this. Yeah, that's how it works. So. I want you to guess what kind of render engine is it? Is it maybe Cycles? This is Blender Conference after all. This must be Cycles, yeah. So, this was rendered, technically speaking, in Johannes Westmark's brain because this is not a 3D render. This is a painting by Johannes Westmark, and he didn't use. Sophisticated technology to calculate the light bounces, and so on. He used his hands, his brush, his brain, and some acrylic paint to create the perfect illusion of reality. And he tricked me, and hopefully he tricked you, into thinking that what you see is real stuff, or at least a 3D render. And by the way, I contacted Johannes Westmark. And I know that he's watching the stream right now. Leave. So, can you give him a nice round of applause? <laughs> It's incredible. He describes himself as an old CG nerd. He started his career in 3ds Max, and then he moved to painting. And by the way, this is not a photo. This is an acrylic painting too. So this just sucks.
the good news is that in Blender, we have all the tools we need to create the realistic renders. Yay! And the bad news is some of these tools are not so obvious. And we have to use our cunning brains to their full potential to make use of these tools. Yeah? And there is no such thing as make realistic renders button. I asked Don. He said no. <laughs> and actually, he didn't say no. He replied with a joke. He said, it's the same button as on cameras make great photo. You pressed it many times. So I, but I realized that that was a joke. We don't have any kind of make realistic renders button, not even in the next version of Blender. And if you take realistic rendering for granted, bad things happen. Let me give you an example. Caustics. If you have a glass of water, I mean in real life, if you have a glass of water and you put the light source behind it, you see this beautiful envelope of refracted rays, which is obviously called caustics. And you may think, all right, I'll just launch Blender. I'll create a glass of water, put the light source behind it, and voila. But that's not that happens. What happens instead is this, which is a nice render, yeah, but no caustics whatsoever. And if you desperately want to create caustics, it just doesn't work this way. If you take realistic rendering for granted, bad things happen. You have to help Blender to give you realistic results. You often have to help Blender. You have to do what Johannes Westmark does. You have to trick viewers into thinking that what they see is real. In other words, you have to cheat. And to the right, this is Blender Render plus some cheating. But you have to do it, do it like the artist. And for the next 15 or 10 minutes, we'll be talking about how your art may improve if you cheat a little bit. Let's start with caustics. As I've said, no need to bang your head against the wall. You can just use the light texture, for example. You can take the photo of the caustics and just project it onto the geometry. Uh, it's much, much easier yeah, than simulating the caustics effect in a physically correct terms. It's often much more punchy and much more realistic, I should say. And you, uh, this effect is very versatile, of course. You can use it for many different purposes, for beautifying your zombies, for example. And uh, even if the object is not refractive, you can still have caustics. So this just gives you a control over what you do. And uh, light texture is a very cool way, very fast, cheap, and cool way uh, to influence the throw pattern of a light source. So how you can add the complexity to your lighting? You can build additional geometry to block the light, to create uh, some interesting patterns. Or you can influence the light throw pattern itself. So the idea I want to share with you is that to achieve very realistic results, you can cheat and do it like the artist. Uh, point number two, light maps. Uh, sometimes we can use the old school techniques to kind of take our lighting to the next level. Baking light maps means uh, storing lighting information in textures. And games in mid-90s like Quake abused this technique a lot because their computers were very slow, obviously. So the artists had to bake lighting information in textures because the computers were unable to run this in real time. Now the computers are a little bit faster but we still can use this technique for artistic purposes. Yeah? And by the way, this is how it looks in Quake 3, when you remove textures and you're left only with the light map and some color information. So we can use this for artistic purposes. Imagine you have this kind of nature scene, mushrooms, one light source, usual stuff. Uh, so one way to approach it would be to create the array of light sources, some very complex rig, and uh, then tweak the material. And that's all right, that's what we do often, but uh, as I've said, sometimes it's just better, better to go the more artistic way 
and to approach it uh, as an artist. Say you can bake the light map, and by the way, this is not the light map. Uh, in Blender, is, uh, this is called the complete map. So you have the light information as well as textures. So you bake this, and then you just paint the hell out of it. So you can do whatever you like. You can treat this as a canvas. You can do what Johannes Westmark does all the time. So I've just took this baked thing, and I've spent just like five minutes painting light. And to me, it looks pretty good. And all right, go ahead. I'll need a sip. Uh, to me, it looks very punchy and pretty much realistic. And uh, I want to take this concept even further. And maybe I'm stretching it too far. I want to talk about photogrammetry. Photogrammetry is the process of automatic generation of 3D model out of photos. So you just take like 60 photos of your shoe or of your cat. You handle it to the photogrammetry software. It generates 3D model for you. Uh, but what's even more cool, it also bakes uh, the textures and bakes the light, the real world light. Then you import it to Blender. And you can do whatever you like, but still, you will have this underlying layer of realism below the surface. Yeah? So you can capture the real world lighting and use it as a reference and build on top of it. Is it cheating? Well, probably. Does it improve your art? Yeah, I'm very confident about it. And you can take it even further and ignore cycles, lighting capabilities whatsoever. I built this Millennium Falcon model out of paper. Then I photo scanned it. And it looks so-so. Uh, but you'll get the message. You can just ignore cycles, lighting capabilities and use a emis emission shader with captured real world light. And number four, reflections. And before you get bored, because this is what happens eventually, everybody gets bored. Uh, if you aren't, aren't satisfied with the reflection, what you can do is change the camera angle, try to find a different angle. Uh, you can rebuild the whole world around this object, or alternatively, you can just sample the reflection from a different scene. That's how we do it. Uh, it's, it's absolutely, how should I say it? It's cheating at its purest, yeah? But nine times out of 10, it gives you the result you want. So what you do, you take an HDRI, I mean a spherical panorama, and this one is made by Greg Zal. Thank you, Greg. Thank you. So what you do is you add this reflection from the spherical panorama on top of your initial one using the add shader. And by doing this, you also break the energy conservation law. But who cares, yeah? As long as it looks right, it is right. And uh, before I went to conference, I wanted to say something smart on stage. And this is the right moment, I think. So physically correct doesn't, equals, doesn't equal realistic. But you know what? I realized that this is pretty smart, after all. Because you can cheat and get realistic results, or you can stay completely physically correct and just produce crap. <laughs> it all depends, yeah? Number five, the final one, before we go and get some coffee and exchange some jokes, as usual, volume light hack. Every 3D artist knows that volume rendering is a pain in the butt, because if you ever tried to make a kind of a puff of smoke, something easy, you know that it's very, very hard it can easily take like hours to simulate and like eternity to render. I tried to make it. This is not looking good. Uh, what you can do is just cheat. You can create a few planes, position it behind the object, 
and do what game development artists have been doing for ages. You just create a transparent material, add the smoke texture to it, and pretty much you're good to go. This takes just five minutes. And this is looking pretty convincing if you don't move the camera too much. The illusion works really well. And if you haven't tried it, go ahead and do it, because you will be amazed. This is simple things, but they look gorgeous. Oh, you haven't seen this? <laughs> and uh, during this moment of the talk, I probably should say something like, but there are many more lighting hacks, and you can find them on creativeshrimp.com, but it would sound like I'm advertising, yeah? And I will burn in hell for doing this. So I won't do this. Don't visit Creative Shrimp. <laughs> there is nothing interesting here. And nothing at all. And we aren't working on the new, very exciting <laughs> training about space, galaxies, nebulas, asteroids, black holes. I'm kidding. We are working on the new stuff. It will be so damn exciting when it comes. Do you like it? I claim that we need to have courage to admit that we cheat all the time, and we should do it even more often, but do it like the artists. That means to be smart, because when Pixar artists use 230 light sources in one shot to make it look believable, they are smart. That means to be resourceful. When Johannes Westmark uses nothing more than his hands, his brush, his brain, and some acrylic paint to create a complete illusion of reality, he is resourceful. And that means to be brave, because once you step onto this path, people will get violent at you. <laughs> they will like to punch you in the face and beat the crap out of you for doing that. But that's totally worth it. And I think that Cheating is what makes me the better artist. I hope so. Because I'm always ready to cheat and keep a straight face. Uh, that means I'm always ready to find the unexpected solution to the problem. You do the same thing and be prepared to be amazed. And by the way, I always had the replacement keyboard, just in case. <laughs> Thank you so much. Go grab some coffee. <laughs>